Okay? In Psalm 138, verse 2, it says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth, for you have magnified your word above all your name. You hear that? God's word is above his name. What does that mean? That means if he doesn't keep his word, his name's no good. Do you get that? Yes. Let me, listen. There is one major thing that the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to discredit the word of God. He started that in the garden when he said, has God really said? And he's doing the same thing today. Well, you know, the word's not important. What's really important is that we have the spirit. Uh, no, it's both. Why? Because the word and the spirit, they agree. You can't have the spirit saying one thing and the word saying something different. It won't happen. One of you is wrong. It's probably the person opening their mouth. Okay? So you have to decide that the word of God is what it says it is and that you will stake your life on it. If somebody came up to you, and as has happened many times, and put a gun to somebody's head and said, do you believe in Jesus? If you say yes, I'm going to kill you. Then most people say, well, I would go ahead and say yes because I'm not going to deny Christ. Okay, but you understand Jesus is the word made flesh. So that word about healing is just as much Jesus as Jesus is about, save, about being salvation. So if somebody comes up to you and put a gun to your head and said, do you believe in divine healing? If you say yes, I'm going to kill you. You might go, well, not divine healing, but, you know, trying to save your life. No, you just denied Jesus. Because yeah. it's all one and the same. You can't divide that up. The same Jesus that said he saved you is also the one that said he bore you the stripes so you could be healed. So he's either lying about nothing or about all of it. You don't get to pick and choose, right? He, what he said is the way it is, and you have to decide. I've seen enough divine healing. I've seen enough of what God has done. There's no way I could deny that. I don't care what it would be. There's no way I could deny it. Why? Because I've seen it. People say, well, healing passed away. Well, you're too late. Why? Because I've seen it, right? Well, when did it pass away? Oh, it passed away after the disciples. Really, is that when God died? Well, no, God, well, God didn't die. Then, then how did Jehovah Rapha die? How, how come he's not Jehovah Rapha anymore? Who gave you the right to change his name? See, all of this, this all stands or falls together. That's why this is so important. Now, I, I'm going to stop here, but I wanted to, uh, when I come back, I'll tell you a situation that highlighted this to me in two places. One was in a Russian church, and one was in Italy when we were there. But I can tell you, this above everything else, you've got to get this. You've got to get to the place where when you read that and you see what it says, that you will not back off of it. Now, I'll, I'll give you this statement, and it's this. Revelation brings conviction, and conviction brings movement. So first, you, you have to have a revelation. Now listen, when I say revelation, I'm not saying sitting around and wait until God drops something on you. No, there is a key to receiving revelation, and that key is your pursuit of that key. You pursue the revelation, and you'll get the revelation. You understand? You pursue the truth, you'll find the truth. You seek, and you shall find. It's that simple. So you don't have to wait until God drops it on you. But there's all kinds of different things involved. There's revelation, there's enlightenment, right? There's understanding, there's knowledge, there's wisdom. All of these things are there. And you have to pursue them yourself. Amen? Amen? Amen. And as you do that, you get revelation. When you get revelation, now you have conviction. See, if you don't have conviction on something, you don't have a revelation. Of it. You don't have a true understanding of it. When you get a true understanding of something, you have conviction to stand and you won't bow. And if you will bow, you don't have revelation, you don't have conviction. But when you have an understanding, revelation, and then you have the conviction to say this is a truth, now the thing is you're not going to be able to just stand. Now you've got to move with that truth. See, for me, Mark 16, verse 18, believers lay hands on their sick and they shall recover. That's not just written. That's not just words. It's not just scripture. That's a, that's a revelation. It's conviction. And because of that, it made me move. Because I had to become obedient to what that says. If you're not obedient to it, you don't believe it. Real simple. Amen?